11 from heaven, magic 11s. Let's take a, what time is it? We'll take a break here in about eight minutes. Uh, make it a 10 minute break. So we'll start on these. I don't think DeLynn does a very good job in his book of explaining that these things work a lot different for the dealer and the non-dealer. These two card 11s have very little value to the non-dealer. But they're valuable for, for the dealer. They're not equally of value. As I've listed them here, this 110 is the least value, even though it totals 11. Of these combinations, that's the least valuable. This one's the most valuable, because if you need pegs, if you need pegs, you can take your chance on taking the 15 plus score in the 31. If you don't need pegs, play it safe and make the count 16 and catch the 5 on the end for 2. But if you really need pegs, take them both. Take the 15 and hope they have to make the count 25 and you've got four, you've got four unanswered pegs. If the five, this is one of the arguments also for playing a 5, 6, 4, 7 in favor of a four, five, six with a face card. You've got two 11-point combinations. You can get it both ways. I like to go with the five on the first go-around when they play the 10. But you can play 17 on the first go-around and then drop the four for 31 if you want. I like it a little better the other way. but, but it's true if you hold these, you only get six points, five, six, four, seven. Whereas you could hold a four, five, six with any ten pointer and have seven. But you do not have the pegging potential with the four, five, six face card that you have with these, these four in a row. And you can play this hand either way. You can decide to go after some pegs on a middle card lead, or you can, on a ten point lead, you can play the other way and pick up some relatively safe pegs. By the way, in this case here, in this case here, if, the, if I make the count 15 on a 10 lead and they pair it, I would play the 6 for 26. Very high percentage you get a go. Play your 4 then for a run of 3 and a go is 4. So you picked up 2 earlier and a Three and a go is four, six pegs. <clears throat> Three, eight, keep in mind if you're dealing, you want to get the count with an eight, 18, 28, 31. With the deuce nine, we want to get it 19, 29, 31. We just need 10 points in play. Now these, these many of these do not work to speak of if there are no 10 point cards in play. The idea of these is they'll allow you to get 31 because they total 11. So 20 and 11 is 31. So you need some 10 point cards to make them work the way they're supposed to. Three card 11s are good for everybody. They're good for the dealer and they're good for the non-dealer. If the only hand you can keep is two deuces and a seven, there's some good pegging potential there whether you're the dealer or the non-dealer. You just have to hang on, make these little suckers count. Five, three, three, you might get the 15, plus you might get the threes in on the end for four. See what I mean? 15, 25, 28, go, 31, four, six pegs. Four, four, three, same idea. You can play it either way you'd like. I like to keep the fours together if I need pegs. But it's true you can probably get 31 without keeping the two fours together. Five, five, one, same song. These work for either the dealer or the non-dealer, three card 11s. Two card 11s work only for the dealer. And there's some other interesting little hands. I mentioned four, five, five, six, four, five, six, seven. Here's another little interesting one, particularly if you're the dealer, three, eight, and a four, seven. You can probably get 31 twice if your opponent is playing 
uh, face guards. I already mentioned that one. And then once in a while you'll pick up a hand like this. You wonder, what in the world should I keep? If these are the only peggers you got, and your opponent is far enough out that they need to keep a face card run, say, say they're counting first and they need 10 or 12, they got a double run of face cards, you're going to get all the pegs. I mean, they might get a goal. I guess they have to if they got all big cards. But, but you got them covered, you see, with these, however they go. You can make the count 18, then 31, and for threes and eights, deuces and nines. And if you didn't have any better pegging cards to keep, that's a good set of cards down there. They're not going to get many pegs on you most of the time. Now, there are some four card 11s. A lot of people miss these. Some of them are really powerful. Be looking for them when it takes all four cards to make 11. <laughs> It's a total of all four cards to make 11. You can do some great things with those. In, the, in this one here, we're starting to get into the nice possible scoring one. If the lead is a 10-pointer and you've got a deuce and three threes, make the count 12. So usually they'll make it 22. If they're holding a double run of face cards, you play your three for 25, what do they do? Say go. Go. So you play a three for 28. Take your pair. I see people every week miss the pair. Take your pair and then just quietly. <laughs> oh, and nobody can do it quietly. I mean, you. <laughs> 31 for eight. <laughs> but it is nice if you can do it with some grace. <laughs> really not. Yeah. I mean, after you hooked them for the pair, you know, it, you ought to kind of ease into the next one, shouldn't you? Okay. Now, I've got to tell you that over the years, I have held this hand here, eight and three ones. And I also like the three deuces and the five, but the eight and three ones is real easy to see how it works. You get a 10-point lead. Don't care what it is. If it's a 10 that looks like that, don't sweat it. You make the count 18. It's easy on a jack, a queen, a king. But if it looks like that, you still make the count 18. It doesn't matter. If they, give, if they got the 9 for 27, you play your ace for 28. And the only thing that happened, you won't get the 31 for 8. You'll just get a 30 for 7. But stick with your pegging plan. Don't let me screw up your plan. If you keep this hand with the idea of pegging, <clears throat> don't let me screw up your plan. Hang on to the ace as long as you can. And don't worry about my, wow, 10. I can't put my eight on a 10. 10? That, wow, that's a dumb play. Ain't that a dumb play to put an eight on that sucker? No. Not when you got three ones, it's no dumb play. <laughs> it's what you plan to do from the beginning. Carry it out. Okay. Now, this one is not so easily seen. But this hand does exist, and it offers great pegging potential. Because again, our opponent has got a double run of face cards. I mean, we're sitting down near the end of the game. We need eight or ten to win the game. But they're counting first. If they're needing eight points or more, I mean, most people would prefer not to hold a double run of face cards. But if that's what they got, and they need first count and they need ten or so, they're going to hang on to the double run. So you take 15 on the first ten-point lead. They make the count 20. You say 22. Hmm. Go. Oh, 24 for 2, 26 for 6, and a goal is 7. Wow. Sir. 